So a lot of people have been asking, where's the Gruelin? When are you guys gonna work on the Gruelin? Well, today, finally, me and Mike are finally going to start working on all the little small stuff on this channel, just cause it'll be boring. It's like uh, moving the suspension points a little bit right now. You'll see some of it on the main channel maybe, but if not, then it'll all be on here and maybe clean up some wiring. Just get this thing tidied up so we can do the bigger reveal stuff. And it most certainly has been a while. There is a backpack here. Um, a plushie in here and that could stay. My helmet's in there. Key's still in here. Um, still in the office space. And uh, a GPS package from the promo. All right, let's give it a, a little start. Oh, Ugh. all right. Let's see if this will start first try or not. Probably won't, but never know. Key. Looks like it's good. Neutral. Well, she made it to the uh, lift, no problem. Mike guided me on. Looks like uh, the width of a 599. Hey Tim, yeah. I got something for you. What are these? These are your new rear shock mounts. Oh, sick. Yes. Which way, is this, is this the right way? Uh, uh, yeah, you had them the right way, just, uh, yeah. So it's gonna go on here to replace this thing. So ah. it'll go on there, we'll so chop that lower off. lower the car. Exactly. Mm. So the shock will mount up higher, because right now the threads are like, all the way down. Yeah. We can't lower the shock anymore. We're gonna run out of travel. Yep, exactly. So yeah, let's see that thing. That's uh, yeah. So the bottom of the shock is sticking out of there. Yeah. And it was like almost touching the boot here on the axle. <laughs> but it was still high. Like the car yeah. was still, the car still pretty high. Pretty good there. wheel gap. Um, yeah. Hmm. So we'll pull the shocks off. Yeah. We're gonna chop these things off, grind yeah. it all smooth. But before we do that, we need to measure because we need to get the distance from here um, to either the center of the bolt hole uh, uh, so we know yeah. where to put the other one so we don't have to figure that out later. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'll measure so that up So probably right from here? Yeah, we'll measure this side from here to here and then we'll do the other side because these are actually in different spots. Oh yeah, that one's On that off. side. Yep. So we'll have to measure both sides. Um, and then we can cut it. And then we can cut it. We can grind them smooth. And then we're gonna have to pull the front shocks off too because the front of the car is high Yeah, the front's well. also high. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. They, there was like one shock apparently that fit in this car that was low enough because of where they put the suspension pickup points. Yeah. Um, they tried to basically, obviously change the shape of the car. And they're using MR2 suspension on this thing. Yeah. Um, and with the way the front of the car is, like really slanted down, uh, trying to make it look like a supercar. Well, because of that, the shock is sitting lower, yep. which makes the car higher so we uh we don't have much room to work with but yeah i mean we could move that up but the problem is this fender is glued just like a murcielago yes it is bonded it's a super car it is a super <laughs> car that is true uh but is so on the front instead of modifying this i think we might actually take these we can cut this because this comes off the shocks so we can cut these off we can move oh. the stuff around i can make new ones if we need to and um basically there's, there's space on the shock Exactly. Mm. So we'll keep the shock, we'll keep the shock travel, but we'll move this up, basically like a drop knuckle. Yep. Um, so that's our project for the next uh, probably two days. Cool, sounds good. Let's uh, get this thing at a normal ride height. Yes. Um, and, then, and then we can do some actual cool stuff to this car. So guys, watch us do this conversion <laughs> to try to make these shocks work. They're better than the shocks that were on the car. They just don't fit right. So now we've got to go through, do all this work to get the car to sit how we want it, to get the alignment right, to get the ride height right. And then, well, there's other stuff to clean up too. But then, <laughs> then we can make this car look cool. All right, so first mod, just chop this section off. So basically that section is now gone, which is gonna let us Raise this all the way up over there um, and drop the front end down. Hmm. Looks like about an inch and a half. So 
that'll drop the car down where we want it. It might even leave us a little bit of room for ride height adjustment, but that's basically all we can do without cutting stuff on the chassis. Um, there's no more room left and where the bolt hole center is, um, is going to be pretty close to where the collars would go. So if we did lower it more, like I could cut these ears off of here and make new ones and weld them on. But the problem is that up here, these are pretty thick and where the bolt sits, it's kind of in line with that. And the knuckle itself is thicker. So that would hit these. So that's as low as we're gonna be able to get it, which I think is actually gonna work out. Um, it looks like it needs to be about an inch lower in the front. Um, obviously we're gonna do the rear a different way because in the rear it's easy to cut that top mount off and the shock itself doesn't really have that big step like this one does. So now that I cut this, I'm gonna put this in the mill and machine this down flat because right now I just cut it on the bandsaw. Uh, so it's a little rough and not exactly a straight edge. So head over to the bands, uh, head over to the mill put this in, clamp it in place, and then do a couple passes on the top and make this all nice and flat. What you got going on over there, Tim? This is the idle valve where uh, this thing came off. While I was looking at it, and it's, uh, it looks like they just made a plate and threaded it. And uh, the threads are kind of messed up. That is very interesting. Yeah. Um, but also, I don't know if this is really doing anything because it looks like like the Honda ones where they use coolant to make it like yeah, pass open through and to, close. To, well, I think that's to like a uh, warm up thing. Yeah, but if, it's not, if it doesn't have this, doesn't it just say open? <laughs> Um, or, I think that's like a temperature control. So there's there's the motor down here. Yes, here. And then I think if that's hooked up, yeah, maybe it it's was. working properly. Um, but yeah, so it didn't break. It just kind of unthread or stripped a thread out or something. Uh, it's stripped here, and then it looks like they just cut that to yeah. make it fit in there. So maybe we just make a new plate or something. Maybe. Because uh, I could try to re-thread that, but... Uh, yeah, kinda... it's not going to last long, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at it. I mean, the other option is we could weld, like make a new plate and weld a fitting to it oh, and, and replace that thing. And actually with... make it more secure, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that is a good option, actually. Yeah, <laughs> that, might, that might be the best way to go. But I got this. Oh, all, so now uh, we can see... Uh... Machined and ready to go. So we can put this on and I can do the other one. Cool bolt these front shocks back in here and then all we have to do is all the work in the rear <laughs> <laughs> so we're back it's monday it's monday um time uh, to make some cuts <laughs> chopping uh what are we cutting off first uh we're we just gonna cut this like in a big chunk yeah so it's out of the way uh, that makes it way easier to cut off little pieces with an angle grinder. Yeah. Uh, trying to do the whole thing, like that blade will get caught on something and it'll break. It's really yeah. sketchy. Throw a lot of sparks and, and all, all that good stuff. Yep. So uh, I got that fresh Diablo blade on here. I'm going to do some, uh, some cutting. Off. One side One down. Side well, yeah. kind of done. Well, it still has to get cleaned up, but yeah. that, that's fine. But that was the easy cut. All right. Well, one more and then... Uh, and then you can get to work with the angle grinder. <laughs> yeah, cleaning these up and then the, um, we'll get the new ones fitted. Exactly. So now both sides are all cleaned up and you're just getting the angle. Yeah, get the angle right, match them on both sides and also got to get this distance. Oh, from the center hole. Yep. And then uh, a yeah, little one. MIG action and get it done? Yep. Cool. We'll weld it up. Is that it, Mike? I think so. I think about eight degrees is where we want it. Yep. But we also need to get the um, this back hatch. Yeah. And put it on here and make sure that this doesn't hit the bodywork. Mm. 
think it should be good, but... I think it'll be clear, because... Oh, it's there now. It's here. I will check it. I'll yeah. put a couple tacks and I will check it, just to make sure. I'll weld this all the way in place and then it doesn't fit. Okay. All right, to get the hatch from the other roof. Yes. We've got to uh, probably use a forklift because that thing's pretty heavy. It's a, it's quite heavy, it even is. though it's fiberglass. Yeah, it's, a, it's thick fiberglass and it's a big piece. So. Yeah. It's uh, pretty much the whole uh, rear of the car. I'll tack the other side on too, and then, uh, then we'll put the hatch on to make sure it fits. Both sides. Both sides. So there's the hatch. We gotta get that thing onto that thing and get it all the way around to that side. Well, let's go. Well, we just slid it on. Uh, I think you're just gonna tilt and it should uh, hook onto it, I guess? Yeah, I think this is how we put it. Oh, it's good. Just You're good. It doesn't fall off. Straight back. Yeah, it's good. Just don't hit too many bumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now do we just do the same thing? Slide it onto the car? Yeah, I think we're gonna have to uh, do that because the way it's supposed to tilt this way. Yeah. Right now it's angled this way. So yeah, I'll just lift it up, put it on top, and then I should just be able to drop it on the car. You can hold it and I'll slide the forklifts back. Okay, I got it. I'll hold on to the uh, nice and light rear. Okay, the test went good. Uh, there's just enough room. About a half inch. <laughs> so we're probably gonna have to cut those studs down because those studs are pretty long. Yeah, they're uh, they're quite long on the coilovers, but yeah. that's easy. Yeah, so we'll fold them down. Yeah. And then we'll cut the tops off and then we can like take them back down and sand the tops and make them nice, the bolts nice and smooth, they're not sharp. Yep. Um, and then it should clear because we had about uh, somewhere around that much room. Yeah. It wasn't completely set in place, but it might have even been a little lower than it needs to be. Yep. Um, so, yeah, look good. We'll weld them up. We'll drop this in the other room. Cool. That goes back in its uh, temporary home. Sorry we couldn't show you guys, but it was uh, a little bit sketchy with just two of us trying to get that thing on. So, we had to prioritize getting that thing on safely first. But uh, if I had a way to set up this camera better, we would have showed you, but it was kind of boring, anyways. How's it welding, Mike? Pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it's all thick. Yeah, Just strong. Put a bunch of heat in it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick little paint session, Mike. Mm-hmm. Just to make sure it doesn't rust. Yeah, exactly. I need these brand new top mounts. Yeah. It's getting all crusty looking. It's okay, there's already rust on the car, but yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep we it off of this. We don't need our stuff to do that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use Dave's wheels. The bent one. The bent ones, yeah. <laughs> all of them are bent. <laughs> so these are all from his uh, GT4 McLaren race car. They're all a bit bent, so they need to get straightened out. Anyway, the finish, the finish on them is pretty wrecked, so we're not worried about it. But we got all the suspension on there. Still got a beta camber in it, but we basically put a level gauge on the hub and uh, adjusted the camber to take as much camber as we could out of it. So it's about one and a half degrees negative right now. We'll see what it ends up when we put the car down on the ground and then we'll have to adjust the toe. Um, and then the front, we'll have to adjust the caster, the toe, the camber, everything and the ride heights. Ready. Ready. Let's go. I think that's looking a lot better already. Yeah, it's much lower. Yeah. But now you can see the wheel. Yeah, there's a, uh, like we need some camber in the front. <laughs> yeah, it's sticking out like crazy. Same thing here, it's got like, looks like it almost has positive camber. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
Maybe I put them like not all the way. Oh, actually, I don't think the front there was too much like slot in the shock itself to adjust. To adjust that? Yeah. All right. Well, I might have to slot some holes. If the two holes where it bolts on, um, we don't have enough room there. We'll have to slot them a bit and then get that cam that we want. We can always put a bigger washer there and then get it where we want it and we can weld the washer in place or tack the washer in place to keep it from sliding around just in case. Sometimes you hit a big pothole or something and if you have that slot, it can move, uh, but that gives us our adjustability. So if we need to do that, we can, but we'll see what we have to work with right now. Um, it's kind of a big process to get the alignment done on something like this. When you change the ride height, the camber changes and the toe changes. Um, so you kind of have to get the ride height close, then adjust the camber close, adjust the toe close, and then go back through it and kind of do this process where you keep going over and over again until you get everything right. Because when you move one thing, it changes a lot of other things at the same time. Well, on a positive note, the axle angles aren't super crazy anymore. It's pretty much straight now. That's much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit less afraid of them breaking. Yeah. So they already took a lot of abuse, but... And a lot of control arms, like where they're sitting, is not bad either. Yeah, they're pretty flat. Yeah, they're pretty flat. Ideally, you'd want them to be like down a little bit that way because as they move up, that way the wheel will add camber yeah. instead of take away camber. But it is what it is. There's not a whole lot that we can do about that right now without kind of re engineering the entire thing, making a new subframe, raising the inner pickup points. Uh, that's a lot of work, and I think it's gonna work okay the way it is. If it was a serious track car, then we'd probably be moving some stuff around, but uh, this is just gonna be a cool street car. Right now, it's just Tim's block beater. <laughs> <laughs> now the car is down, we're gonna measure the ride heights. Not, obviously it's on the wheels, uh, but we wanna make sure that the car is flat um, from left to right, mm -hmm. and we wanna check the rake in the car. It's pretty easy to do on this car because the frame rail is literally the square tube that runs from the front to the back. Yep. So we can measure the heights. We can see you want a little bit of rake in it, but not too much. Uh, so we'll see where we're at there. And then we'll just kind of get that ride height set. Basically uh, just make sure the whole car is even and flat. Yeah. Um, we don't have, we don't have scales. No. So we can't do a true corner balance where you would put a scale underneath each wheel and adjust the collars on the coilovers to get it exactly as close as you possibly can. Um, weight left to right and weight like cross weights, but we'll get really close like this just by spending some time kind of getting the chassis set. So I'll just pick a couple points on the chassis to go off of. Pretty easy back here. I mean, that's so from cool. there to the floor. Yep. And then same on the other side. On the other side. So we are 26 and 7 eighths. I shouldn't have moved the coil over, so hopefully it's the same. It is very, very, very close. It's like within a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. Left to right. So that's good. That's good. Now let's look at the side and the front. It looks like right now the front's a bit higher than the rear. Yeah. Does body work wise or? Yeah, body work wise, looking at the arm. It kind of looks like this side's higher than the other side because I remember seeing the gap not being that big on the other side of the car. This gap here? Yeah, but also it could be the body could work. could be the body work, so let's measure that. Let's see. Go further back here. Yeah, that's pretty good. And 15 and 3 eighths. Then the other side. Fifteen and three eighths. Oh, it's perfect. So we just need to adjust the rake. The so the what do you think? Put the front lower. So fifteen and three eighths here. Let's see what the rear is. And it's actually fifteen and a half. So it's one eighth of an inch higher in the rear. Oh, that's like. Just, Perfect, right? Just a touch of rake. We could go higher in the rear if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, we'd give it like a quarter inch rake. So we could just turn those collars a couple turns. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll do that. I think it looks better 
with a little bit of rake. Yeah, a bit of rake. Otherwise, if it's too flat, it looks like the front end is in the air. Yep. Um, so we want to avoid that. And I'm not sure why the front, why the tires are sticking out so much because they weren't before, right? I don't think so. Maybe maybe I did pull the camber out more than I thought. Yeah. But it didn't feel like it. So we'll have to check that. We'll probably check that first. Yep. Because when you put that wheel, it's pretty wide. So yep. when you start to camber that wheel, it'll actually raise the front end. Mm. So depending on how much camber you have in it, um, if it's positive camber or flat, it's gonna sit like this. And yep. then as you add camber, it's actually gonna lift the wheel up and oh, put it gotcha. on the inside. So it's actually gonna raise the front end. So it just creates like a little high spot, basically. Exactly. So let's put it up and uh, check that front camber. Well, Tim got the strings all set up on the car so we can check the alignment and uh, adjust it. Basically the idea with the strings are you create a box around the car and you put the car in the middle of that box and then you're able to tell which way the wheels are pointing with, with toe, not with camber. Uh, we'll have to use a camber gauge for that. But Tim is currently underneath the car. Hello. How's it going down there, Tim? Um, I'm just turning it because this one needed a lot. Yeah, your initial uh, marks were nine millimeters in. in. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like three eighths of an inch. So. And that's just on one side. Hopefully, what I just did is enough. Well, uh, I can check it for you. Where's the ruler? I think it's on top of the toolbox. I think. Ruler, ruler. There it is. So we just use this like straight edge ruler here and uh, put it down here to the front. And that's, uh, this is about 72 millimeters there. I'm gonna check the rear. And that one's about 75. So that's a three millimeter difference between the front and the rear. We wanna zero it out right now. And then we'll go back to the center of the wheel and check both sides and make sure that the strings are still in the middle. Um, sometimes when you move it a lot, it's not exactly centered anymore. So that has to do with the caster, the trail of the knuckle, um, a lot of other things that we're not gonna get into right now because that's like kind of more advanced suspension design and alignment stuff. We're, we're just gonna get this thing dialed in. But uh, yeah, so we'll get both the wheels pointing straight. We'll reset the strings, check to make sure they're still straight after we reset the strings. And then if not, we'll put them back to zero, set the strings in the middle again, and then we can adjust it. So we'll probably go with just a little bit of toe in on the front, probably one millimeter total. It's kind of a basic streetcar setup. If it's a track car, you might actually go toe out on a slower track and get the car to turn in faster. So um, that works well on the track, but on the street, it gets really darty and kind of wanders around. And then the rear will probably put mm, two to three millimeters of toe in. Um, probably total. We don't need to get too aggressive with it, but if we really wanted to dial it in, we would take the springs off the shocks, cycle the suspension, check the toe curve, and then make a decision based off of that. But uh, we don't need to do all that right now. We're just gonna get this thing driving straight. Look at that thing go. better already when we put the suspension on nothing was lined up in the beginning at like the wheels were pointing in all different directions now it's got the matched camber on both sides front and rear the toe is set it looks like it drives better just pulling out of the shop we still have a lot more work to do on the car but for now that was the next step that we needed to do to basically get the car ready for possibly some upgrades we still have to clean up the wiring a bit um, the car is going to need like a proper dyno tune to make sure that everything is running right. Right now the throttle position sensor is literally hanging off of it. And for some reason Tim says it drives better like that, which doesn't really make any sense. I'm worried it might be a little lean, uh, like not enough fuel getting in because the TPS sensor is basically, as you give it throttle, it sees that move and it puts in more fuel. If it doesn't see that move, I don't know why it's running better, but uh, maybe it feels more crisp because it's lean, but it could also blow up. So more stuff we gotta do. Mike. Yes. Is it Taco Friday? It's Taco Friday and we're gonna scooter over to the taco spot. Yeah, why use the van when uh, 
We have these 30 mile an hour scooters. We got these scooters with suspension. <laughs> we can take them down the streets of Compton. It's not too far, so uh, it it's should be only, okay. It's like, what, a mile? You guys actually took them farther, right? The other day? Yeah, we did. I think uh, maybe twice as far, but we'll see how many miles. We got the trip meter over here. I feel like it's not working because I got it up to nine and it hasn't gone up since then. Since then. <laughs> and it's been a couple of days. <laughs> well, let's, let's see what happens. Well, let's test it. Mike, we made it. We made it, and it was like a really, really quick scooter ride. It was actually really fast. Oh, um, the problem was I had to slow down because my hat was flying off. Yeah, I know. I was like ducking my head to kind of <laughs> keep the, the wind down. It's all about the aerodynamics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was tucking my head and uh, trying to go uh, a little bit slower than you. Yeah, I saw you were you were falling back a bit. <laughs> it was also kind of sketchy because there were a lot of semis like that. Did you see that one that just pulled out in front of the other one that was coming? Oh yeah, dude. I got kind of scared. I was like, oh, let me give him some room. Yeah, I stayed in it. I was pretty committed <laughs> uh, and it worked out. So. <laughs> Trusty scooters, we made it. Well, done with food. That was good. I'm stuffed. I had to uh, chug my drink because... Uh, yeah, there's no cup holders in this no thing. Cup Maybe holders. we need to make some yeah. cup holders right here. Yeah, that'd be cool. For the next mod. And uh, we could travel on these some more and uh, come back with goodies. Yeah, exactly. I think we need like a camera mount on here too. Oh yeah, camera mount would be cool so I don't have to... Uh, Try to hold it and hold do one hand. It's so like... Maybe not die. Yeah, it, <laughs> uh, it, it's got like very little caster in it. Yeah. So you get like those speed wobbles. Yeah, it's actually really hard to drive with uh, one hand. Yeah, yeah, it is. Really sketchy. Ooh. Oh, that was uh, loud. That was a <laughs> All right, back to the shop. Go.